Hello, 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 my friend. I am so grateful that you clicked on this video. Welcome. If you clicked, it's because you are ready to plan your quarter. You are ready to have a knockout next 90 days. Your next three months, you want to go into them with a game plan. And I am so proud of you for being here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm going to tell you right now, the SNAP method is a fabulous tool. It is going to be such a fantastic tool. If you have not already gotten your download, do make sure that you click on the link that is in the comments or in the section below, wherever it's at. It's somewhere in the, in the places, y'all. You can also click on the Faith Edit. It will have a, a pop-up box that says Get Into Action. And when you click Get My Guide Now, it will take you to the website. This is a pay what you want type of situation. Why? Because let me tell y'all, I know that this is going to bless people. I know it's going to help people. And this is what I'm actually real time doing. Okay. Today is the top of my new year. I live in the 12 week year or in a quarterly year. And I am starting my quarter today. Okay. And so I was going to be doing this anyway. And I figured I might as well do it with my friends. I might as well walk through this with y'all. And at the same time, give y'all this amazing information. Okay. So let me stop rambling because baby, and I so much to say, and y'all will hear me clapping. Yes, that's me real time clapping in the, <laughs> in the back because I'm so excited to share this information. I am Markeela. I am the CEO of The Faith Edit, which is a boutique business concierge. We serve the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs in the marketplace, women of color. I believe that there is so much that women of color entrepreneurs um, can do in the marketplace, but there is a missing resource that so many of those who are out there sharing resources with us skip over. And that is our faith. There's so many statistics that back this up, but there is, there is a, a Pew Research statistic that says eight out of 10 women of color believe in God operate from faith and that their faith is important to them. And so when I started to think about what it is that I really was passionate about when it came down to kingdom women, it wasn't just getting them to write their books, which, hey, if you want to write a book, listen, let me tell you something. I've been, I've been doing that for people. I've been working with people for their books for over 10 years, over 11, okay? Um, I believe that a book is the easiest way to break into the marketplace. But look, can I tell y'all, I realized that it wasn't just authors that I wanted to serve. It was really just this group of women who needed to learn how to leverage their faith, how to edit their business with faith so that they can operate at a higher level of execution. And all of this came, which we'll talk about in a second, because God gave me a vision that was just way too big for me. And I'm assuming that the reason why you're trying to get your quarterly plan together is because God gave you a vision that was just way too big for you. But I promise you today, you're going to not only get information that is you know, business-wise, that's sound in business, but it's also biblically sound. It's stuff that's going to actually help you have the mindset of a kingdom woman and the mindset of a entrepreneur, an entrepreneur that has a plan. Okay, baby. So I'm Markeela. That's me pointing at you on the screen. Let's get into today's training. I'm going to try to move quick. Okay, y'all. I talk fast. I got a lot to share. I got a lot to say. <laughs> And it is because I know, I know, I know that if I can get you all what you need, if I can put this stuff in y'all's hand, okay, that you will walk away, ladies and gentlemen, so much with so much information. And I'm going to be moving fast. I'm not. I'm going to have my foot on the gas pedal, okay? Because I don't want to waste any of your time. But more importantly, I know that if I can get this into about a 30-minute video, if I can keep this succinct and make sure that you guys get what you need, that this will also keep back any kind of distraction. So before we get any further, let me do this. I want you to take a second. Sit in the fact that you are about to get information that will help you plan your business. Can you do that for me? Can you sit in the fact that you are about to function in a different way than you functioned before? And I want you to get your mind, get your thoughts, get your heart prepared so that you can hear what you need to hear. But also I want you to understand whatever you need to pick up, your spirit man is going to pick it up, okay? So I want you to be present. 
listen in close. I, I will be talking fast, okay? I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna talk fast. I will slow down throughout some of the points, but I promise you, you're gonna get all the information that you need. Okay, friends, here's one more thing that I have to say. If you have not already um, gotten your actual downloads, if you haven't actually gotten the workbook that I'm going through, stop what you're doing right now, okay? <laughs> stop what you're doing right now. Go to thefaithedit.com. When you go to thefaithedit.com, a pop-up will come up that says, get into action, plug in your information. This guide is pay what you want, okay? Did you hear what I said? It's a pay what you want. And here's why, because it's so much valuable information. I want to make sure you guys can get it. Okay. I think I got all my formalities out the way. Y'all ready to learn? I'm ready to learn. Okay. So we are going to talk about a system called the SNAP method that God gave me in 2018. When he gave it to me, I thought it was a system to build confidence. But the reality is confidence is the basis of so much of what we do in the world that really what God was giving me was a system to execution. Instantly, I got overwhelmed. Okay, talk about over my head. What? (laughs) And I imagine that you yourself have also experienced this. Like, why would God give me something this powerful? And I want you to know, I want you to speak an affirmation over yourself that you are the woman for the job. No one else can do the thing that you are going to do in the marketplace the way you're going to do it. And I want you to stand in authority in that and understand that this is your year. This is your time. This is your moment. You have everything that you need right now already. And this plan is going to help you bring it out, execute it out, walk it out, and it's going to help you live it out. Okay. The blueprint is for everything. Okay. And you see how I capitalize it. Okay. Everything. I use this blueprint to get out of a funk, to get out of stagnancy in my cash flow and out of analysis paralysis. I also use this to start everything, a new project, a new year, a new quarter. I use these, these, these methods in my vision storming with Jesus. Y'all, I use this for everything. But in order for this to be effective, you are going to have to set a time frame. I've already given you a little bit of a heads up with a 90 day time frame, a quarter. You can even make this short. You can do this for the next week of your life. If you're like, Marquila, I got a hole I got to get out of. Keep it succinct and keep it short so that you can keep your attention. And I tell y'all, the currency that the enemy dabbles in the most is attention. And so the more attention you focus on the things of God and your focus is on the things that God has for you, the less distracted you'll be. And so if you're like, Marquila, I got to get some focus, then just get real succinct with your time. Use this plan for the next week and then do it again and then do it for another week. And then once you get a little bit more comfortable with it and you're flowing, then you can do it for shorter period, longer periods of time. Okay. So here's what we're going to cover today. You're going to do an exercise that talks about your wants, your needs, and your goals. You're going to, to break it down. So many of us have these big ginormous desires and goals and we really don't know why. We really don't know what we should be doing. And so we're out here functioning in the world with these big old goals and these big old dreams and we really do not know how to accomplish them because we have never actually, um, you know, fueled them with real desire. And so today we're going to fuel what we're doing with real desire, Okay. After we talk about your wants, your needs, your goals, then you're going to go into the next step of our framework, of our blueprint here. And you're going to talk about your most powerful focus. Can I tell y'all something? Your most powerful focus is the part of your dreams, of your goals, of your wants right now that is going to be the most impactful in your life. The first time that I ever heard this was in a 12-week year plan planning session. And I I love the 12 week year. It's a beautiful book. If you have never read it, you should read it. Um, Quarterly living is something that I've I've done for a very long time before I even knew about the 12 week year. But then the 12 week year gave me a little bit more information than what I had before. And so I'm really excited to talk about the, uh, the, the most powerful focus. That's a fantastic tool right there. Then we're going to get into your prior to prioritization map or your prioritization prioritization matrix. 
slow down, Markeela. Prioritization matrix. <laughs> so this is a really powerful tool because there's a million ways to skin a cat. But I have found that if you're not clear on your method to skin a cat, you'll get busy and doing a bunch of stuff that isn't important. And prioritization, delegation, these are really important uh, skills that entrepreneurs have to have or they won't get anywhere and they'll find themselves stuck. And once you create the priorities, then you'll have a task list. And then we end this all with a snap board, which obviously the snap method is my prior, uh, pri proprietary method. It's my trademark copywritten method that, that to be honest, I just can't believe God gave me. And it is such a powerful tool. It's five steps that will get you to done. So the first of those five steps is search. We actually look for inspiration. We, we look for the things that we need to keep ourselves fueled. And then we nourish whatever it is that we want by creating a power statement, a goal statement that will guide us over the time period that we set. And we use that as our guide for every day. And we try to keep our goals, um, our tasks, excuse me, within a small group that we try to accomplish in a day. And then from there, we affirm. And in our space, when we talk about affirming, we're talking about decision-making and obstacle planning, which that's going to be real good. Lastly, I mean, not lastly, excuse me, the, the next, the second to last thing is that we polish and we do that with prayer. You have to pray over your business. You have to pray over your thoughts. You have to pray over your plans. The word of God is very clear about how little God cares about our plans when they're not aligned with his. And so before we, we execute anything, we pray over what it is that we planned. And then we perform. And in our system, it's very important that every day you celebrate. And it's also very important that every day you take time to think about how effective you are. A lot of us, and myself included, hate evaluation. But evaluation is how you know where you're growing and how to grow faster. And it's also how you keep yourself grounded in your work and keep yourself motivated in your work. Okay. Now, I already said this, but I'm going to say it again, baby. This here is a space for kingdom women. And before I can get any further in this, in this video, I want you to stop and recognize that everything you want to do and everything you have done and everything you are at this immediate moment, all of it is covered underneath the blood of Jesus. There is not a single part of you that is not covered by his love and his grace. And so if there's anything in your, in your situation as you're transitioning, as you're planning for your next 90 days, your next week, your next 30 days, do understand that it's all covered under the mighty hand of a God who is on your side and wants the best for you. So many times when we're in transition, when things are unstable, when we're trying to figure it out, it becomes easy for us to forget that we're covered. But I want you to speak that over yourself as you take in this information that you are covered, you are the woman for the job, and you got this. All right, wants, needs, and goals. Let's get into it. So the first time that I ever did this activity was years and years and years ago. Um, years and years and years ago. But then I did it again with my ex-husband. <laughs> Can I tell y'all? Um, my ex-husband actually was doing a program and the program asked him to ask me what I wanted, right? And it was a it, long story, long story. But it had been maybe about three years since I had laid out everything that I ever wanted in my life. And when I did it, it was such a powerful thing because it showed me big things, it showed me small things, it showed me things that I was passionate about, it showed me things that I'd forgotten about. And it was just such a good thing for me to really get in touch with what I wanted because then I could get clear on the goals that I had and how those things connected to what I wanted. A lot of us, especially women, it's hard for us to feel comfortable in the fact that we want things. And it's difficult for us to understand that God wants to give us what we want. But it is in God's heart for us to have our desires. Many of us think that we, um, you know, we get the notions that we get out of the thin, the thin, God, you know, but it's not true. God placed those things in your heart for a reason. And so when I talk about your wants and your needs and your goals, specifically for a quarter, I want you to think granular, right? So don't put like, I want a house, unless you've already been saving for your house, you already have your down payment, you already have your realtor, you've already been looking, then feel free, right? If you've already started the process of a house and it is 
feasible for you to purchase a house in the next 90 days, go for it. But if you're like, oh, I want to buy a house and you know you need at least another 16 to 18 months to get your savings together, get your credit together, then that's not what we're writing here. We're focused on the next 90 days. So here's what I want to do in the next three months. I want to lose 15 pounds. Okay, y'all, listen, here's the thing. I, I I gained some weight, I lost some weight, and then I gained some weight, and I lost some weight. But your girl wants to get to a spell. I, I, I want to be spell, okay? <laughs> um, I want to lose 15 pounds. I want to get consistent, consistent flow in my system. Like, I like I, I will have these these bust and boom or feast and famine is what they call them sometimes where I would have, you know, a, a great influx of clients. And then for the next maybe two weeks, I, it's crickets on all of my social, not my socials. I have a pretty engaged audience, but it's crickets in the back end half of my business. And so I want to get a consistent flow in my system. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. Noah Kagan in his book, he called it your freedom number. My freedom number is $3,500. Um, we're close. We, we close, but I need $3,500 monthly. And my stretch goal, the thing that I've like, we, we work into work is 10K. And once I hit 10K, then I want to hit 15K. But we're close. We're, we're getting there to all of these things. The next thing um, I'm going to put on my wants and needs, I definitely need clothes. I need new clothes, y'all. Um, it's summertime and I got to get my, my, my clothing, especially since I'm about to lose these 15 pounds. I got to get my clothes together, um, specifically for fall, um, because I am a fall girly. Okay. Give your girl some September. She's going to give you a boot. She's going to give you a bag. Um, and so I want to get myself together so that I can fit the clothes that I want to wear, but I also want new clothes for fall. Um, another thing that I want, I have some client, I have a client that is being onboarded for a retainer and I want to make sure that her onboarding um, is, is, is nice. Okay. I want, I want, I got to get her customer journey together. Um, what else? Oh, my kiddos, my kiddos, it's summertime. So my kiddos are in the midst of doing what I like to call um, summer homeschool, which is just like additional intensive for um for their their learning so they can go back to school um advanced and not behind or not even where they were when they started summer I'm a former teacher so it makes sense <laughs> um okay I'm gonna stop there you to put out oh wait I do have one more thing I gotta get me a chestnut pencil from Mac y'all I don't know why I cannot hang on to my chestnut lip pencil but y'all, I, I promise I buy one of these things at least every other quarter. Like, no lie. Every, every six months, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> okay, so I want you to do this exercise for about 15, I mean, for about five minutes. This part of your massive action plan can take a very long time. That's why you have to keep it succinct. Three to five minutes on these things or you'll find yourself, okay, baby, just going and going and going <laughs> and don't do it to yourself. Do not do it to yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, y'all. Sorry. My, um, okay, here we go. I'm back. So you have got to make sure that you have a clear and succinct plan. Um, so in order for that to happen, you can't belabor the point. But you should very much so here, write out everything that you can for the three minutes that you got it, okay? Give it, your, give it your best shot. All right. Now, those are what I want in my systems, okay? Now, I'm going to pick, now, again, I've, I've already done this. So I wrote these things because I want to work this through with y'all, but do know I've already done, <laughs> I've already done this. I have it on a sheet of paper, <laughs> Um, so I'm not like, you know, going to lose all my goals. So here's the thing, y'all. When we talk about your most powerful focus, understand that there are so many things that I wrote down, right? Like so much of the stuff that I put down is important, but what is the thing that's going to get me to have the greatest impact possible in my situation? And if I could be very clear, the most important important thing for me to do is to lose those 15 pounds and also um, to get my consistent flow, right? So lose the 15 pounds and, and get my consistent flow. If I can get my consistent flow together and my 15 pounds, 
number one, I will feel more confident. I'll be more energetic. And also when the fall comes, I'll be, you know, I feel, feel renewed. I love the fall. I was definitely the girl who got all the new stuff, all the new book bag with new pencils. And I used to love back to school time. And so back to school time always invigorates me. And I want to be set up for an amazing back to school. Um, And I want to get my consistent flow. A lot of entrepreneurs are afraid to talk about the fact that business is sometimes feast and famine, boost up, what is it, bust and boom. A lot of entrepreneurs are out here trying to act like they got it all together. And then you go on the back end half of their business and it's like, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's ghetto back here. (laughs) But I promise y'all, I'm in the trenches with you. And so I will never position myself to be somebody who has it figured out. And so I don't want you to be uncomfortable if you have to get consistency. I don't want you to be uncomfortable about what you have to do to grow your business. Wherever your business is, is okay. Wherever you are is okay. And you just need to be honest with yourself so that you can start to make strides in it. These two things are my most powerful focus. I know that if I focus on these two things, number one, my lifestyle, which there were some things I didn't put on my wants, but what I want is to be more active. I want to move my body more. I want to, I want to work out. I want to eat. Um, I eat pretty healthy, but I want to eat more protein. So those are things that will come into play when I lose my 15 pounds, right? In order for me to lose the 15 pounds, some of those other things that are in my other part of my massive action plan, they're already in there. All right. So now that we know the most, most powerful focus, and because I, for the sake of this video, I'm going to focus specifically on the get consistent flow. Um, I don't want to, you know, I want to keep it focused in my area of expertise. I'm nobody's fitness mama, okay? Um, But I am a a business mama. I'm a boss mama. (laughs) And so I'm going to focus my attention here on my most uh, powerful focus in getting consistent flow in my business, right? And through my systems, my sales system, my marketing system, things of that nature. Okay. Now, in order for you to be clear on what it is that you want, you need to write out all of the tasks, okay? All of the tasks, because your your goal is just the beginning. It's not the thing that is going to, you know, like it, you can't magically click your heels three times and get to consistent flow in your income or in cash flow or anything like that, right? You can't click your heels three times and life is magically fixed. It takes tasks and tactics. Um, and so what we have to do now is that every task associated with this focus, everything that you are going to have to do, you need to get it all out and spare no detail. I am only going to take about 35 seconds to list out some things, but you should do this over the course of about five to 10 minutes, really sit in it. And when you think you're, you're finished, go Google, what do I need to do to accomplish blah, blah, blah. And then if it's not on your list, go put that in your list. This should take a little bit of time, y'all. Don't let it take up more than about 15 minutes. Because again, this can get very much so into the weeds if you let it. Planning can be the biggest waste of time if you don't keep it focused. Don't waste your time. Make sense though, okay? So in order for me to get consistent flow, I know the biggest thing is that I have to be funneling um, traffic to my website. I haven't been doing that, but y- y'all see, your girl got it together because where did I tell you to go? I told you to go to the faithedit.com to go get this, <laughs> this download, right? So that's the first thing that I know I have to do. I have to have to funnel traffic to my website. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to make more content. Um, I'm also going to have to wring my content dry. So I talk about this a lot in my spaces. Um, it, a lot of us are out here working too hard, okay? And we need to work smart. I'm going to tell you right now, this here video is going to be broken down into about 15 different pieces of content. I'm going to take some of the audio, I'm going to put it with some video, I'm going to take some of the snippets and put it in open clips and get some some clips from my Instagram and my Facebook. I'm going to take the transcript and turn it into a blog. I'm going to take the download and throw it out there, slime that thing around as a lead magnet. (laughs) So you have to wring your content dry. This is a big part of my system that I can be honest, I just got lazy on. 
Um, and let, let me back up. I didn't get lazy. Your girl is working on five projects right now, four client projects and my own book. And that's a whole other video, video for another time. <laughs> but I know that in order to get consistent flow, I'm going to have to wring my content dry. That means I'm going to have to put my content in as many places as I possibly can. The next thing that I'm going to have to do in order to have consistent flow is sales conversations. So I have got to get back into the flow of getting on the phone with the people who are interested in my products and having conversations with them. I kind of scaled that back because again, I'm working on five projects, but now that I'm publishing some of my clients' books and those things are getting out the door, we're ushering in a new season of more content production and more sales conversations. Another thing that I want to do is automate my um, my year. Again, I live in the 12-week year, so this is really my next 90 days. Um, and not like the next 90 days is in tomorrow. I want to use the month of July to really get my content consistent and to get a flow and to create automation so that by the time I get to September, I'm three months ahead, right? I want to get 90 days in advance. That's really important to me because if I can just have even one piece of content that has some sales language in the captions um, and I can get that con consistently flowing out there, one email and I can get it consistently flowing out there uh, and automate it by the time the fall comes, I can focus my attention on some sales activities and the marketing will still be happening. If you've never heard me give a whole spiel about sales and marketing and the difference, baby, you need to go right now. Don't run. Don't walk. <laughs> run to my Facebook. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash MD Hinton. H-E-N-T-O-N is my last name. Okay. You can also find me on Instagram at I am, I am Markeela. Um, all right. So I'm going to stop here because like I said, for the sake of time, we, we, we can't belabor the point, but you shouldn't stop. You need to, again, you need to know every single thing. Uh, sleep is huge. I don't, I'm sorry. I can't, like, I have to sleep. I don't know about y'all, um, baby. If I don't get me eight hours, <laughs> the next day is, is crazy, right? But you need to put down everything. Like when I say put down everything, girlfriend, if you don't have consistent poof, you need to go put that down in here, okay? <laughs> the task that you need to accomplish so that you can function needs to be in front of you. You got to see them. You got to see them, okay? Here's what happens when we focus on our most powerful goal and we get our tasks that are the most important on here. Then we get more, uh, more confidence and it increases our resilience. I'm going to put a throwaway goal on here just because I want y'all to see what will happen. Something else that I would have to do to get consistent flow or that I could do to get consistent flow in my, in, um, in my, in my business is go live every day. That's just something I have decided is not in alignment with how I want to run my business. But it is something that I could do to create some more consistent flow. I'm putting this on here on purpose, okay? Because I want y'all to see uh, where I'm going to place this inside of our matrix. Okay. So you are looking at what is called an Eisenhower matrix. Let me move my little, my little goals out the way. You are looking at what is called an Eisenhower matrix. The Eisenhower matrix, I don't know if it was created by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. I don't know. Don't get me to lying. What I do know is that that's what this is called. <laughs> Um, but the first time I ever saw it effective was from a wonderful woman. I want to say her name is Allie Ellis. I'll link her video because she, she has an amazing massive action plan that I used for a very long time before I actually created my own, like, you know, geared toward the snap method that had all of my pieces to the puzzle in it. Hers is a great place to start. Um, and if you're watching this video, you're probably an information junkie. So <laughs> I'll put our video in the chat as well. So what we're, what is really important when you're getting clear on your goals? Excuse me, y'all. I apologize. I, I, I had a coffee and a smoothie and all the things. <laughs> but what's very important when you are working on your goals, y'all? is that you have really got to understand which of the tasks you need to actually do. 
entrepreneurs have too much stuff to do, y'all. We have, we have far too many things to do. And so if we're not clear on what we should do and what's the most important, you'll find yourself spending so much of your time and your energy doing things that are good ideas, but not necessarily the God idea for you, or more importantly, not necessary for you to be doing, right? Like there, there are things that other people can do or things that other people should do, but they're not the most important thing for you to do, especially for your business, right? So keep yourself in mind, keep your capacity in mind. I talk about capacity a lot with my clients because your capacity is huge. What you can actually do is all you can actually do. And a lot of us are trying to live our life under the measurements of other people. And it's leading us to burn out. And the Bible says that comparison is the thief of joy. So instead of comparing yourself to other entrepreneurs and thinking about how other entrepreneurs do it, really ask yourself, what is it going to make me feel, you know, what's important to me? What's urgent to me? What's going to make me feel the most fulfilled? So in this matrix, you arrange your goals by what is the most urgent and what is the most important. Urgency trends upward, important trends to the right. So down here, you'll see it says not urgent and unimportant. Those are things that you just shouldn't do. It is not urgent and it's unimportant for me to go live every day. It's just not. Like, it's, it is a tactic. Some people are out here going live every day and it works for them. I personally have found that I will get really wrapped up in making content and not wrapped up in having conversations. And I've already teased at that, that I do best when I have conversations. That's, that's where I win at, is when I'm actually talking to my clients. And to be honest, for the most part, every entrepreneur who's in the early stages or even in the mid like to growth stages, a lot of us, y'all trying to hop and skip and jump and do Facebook ads and do all type of un un enterprise level stuff. <laughs> y'all trying to function your business like Beyonce. Well, you need to come on back over here and fun function your business like a mom and pop shop. Um, scale back your operations so that they make sense for you so that you can actually grow. Um, and I'm gonna leave that there because I that's a rant for another day. Okay, so the most important, the most urgent thing that I need to do um, is have sales conversations. That is so important and so urgent that if I did not have some sales conversations already scheduled for this week, I would be c consistently messaging people to try to get them um, to get on my calendar. That is the most important and the most urgent. That goes into this quadrant right here. You do that first. What I love about the Eisenhower matrix or this prioritization matrix is that it tells you what to do when, okay? That changed my life. Delegate. Here's what I can delegate. I can delegate um, automating my content. Right. Because once I get a flow, I can easily get um, an AI to do this or an, a, um, a virtual assistant. Right. I can have somebody else do this. Again, this is just for the sake of, of demonstrating. I probably today would not spend my money on a VA for automating content. I would rather spend my money on a VA to send emails. I hate emails. So whatever is the thing that you dislike the most, that's what you should delegate if you have a small budget or a, a low capacity, right? So for example, if you got a nine to five and you're working your business as a moonlighter, it might be difficult for you to find a VA who can keep up with your schedule and work at midnight, right? Unless you're working with somebody who has the capacity to. So you might want to delegate the tasks, not the ones that you want to get off you the fastest, right? Because they're the ones that are the biggest projects, but do the ones that you are the least effective at. Give somebody else the task that, to be honest, you suck at. That's what you should be working on. Okay. Now down here are the things that you schedule. These are the things that are important, right? But they're not urgent. Like it's not, it's not something that you need to go do at this immediate moment right now, right? I'm going to put sleep here because if I schedule my sleep the proper way, right? If I really schedule out how I'm going to function as a, as a person <laughs> at the, in the evening time, I get my nighttime routine, then I won't have to be stressed. I won't have to be hurried, right? And obviously 
sleep is something that we can schedule. But you can obviously put content here. I could put my, you know, ring my content here too. Because that is something that I really can be scheduling. It's not something that I have to do tomorrow. It makes sense for me to begin, but it's not something that has to happen immediately. Okay, now that you have your prioritization map together, the next step is to take that prioritization map and take those tasks. And now you know what to do first, right? You know what to not do at all, right? Just don't even do that. <laughs> um, and, right, so I can delete that one because I shouldn't even be doing that. Automate my content. That is what I said I was going to delegate. and Put it over here. I thought I was going to, you know, schedule my sleep and schedule ringing my content. And now here we go. I'm going to put my sales conversations here. Okay, Markeela, I get that. That's cool. Why did I need to put the tasks in a completely separate list off of my matrix? Because now when you go into your snap board, you have an easy place to pull your tasks from. And to be honest, what you're going to have to also do is prioritize the things that you have prioritized, right? So for example, here in the not urgent and important, have more than one thing. You're going to have more than one thing in each of these categories. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, what do I need to do first within this? What do I, what's the most important? I like to also prioritize things within these categories so that I can know what I need to focus my attention on next. Okay, we're, we're grooving, y'all. We're grooving, we're grooving, we're grooving. Okay. Now, this is my favorite part, obviously, because it's my proprietary system. I, I, I love, I love the SNAP method, but it's also my favorite part because, um, and I, I heard a, there's a YouTuber who I love who does productivity, and he talked about something called a GPS, and he said, you have to have your goal, you have to have your plan, you have to have a system to keep yourself in your plan and to make your goal happen. I absolutely love that concept. And it it dawned on me like, hey, I function in a GPS anyway because I make my goal um, and then I operate in my plan and then my system is the flat method. And so our goal is to, to get consistent flow, right? Um, if you have a specific project or if you want to name it, I love creating things and names for stuff because it just keeps your girl happy, right? So for example, um, a lot of us right now are doing the 75 hard business challenge, right? Um, I know a girl who's doing a 75 soft challenge, right? So the 75 soft business, okay? Because I don't want to live a higher life either. <laughs> um, so this is 75 days, right? Which gives me an additional 15 days in my uh, in my 12-week year to do all the other things that I need to do. Okay, so in this system, you're gonna go and look for research and, and take some time to get inspiration. Again, don't let this take up too much of your time. You guys, a lot of us, we we get into the weeds with things and then you find yourself you spent three hours on a session um planning but you didn't get nothing done I don't believe in that so I like to keep these things timed and succinct three to five minutes the longest thing that you should spend your time on is your priority matrix um and getting all your tasks you got to get all your tasks out so that you can know what you should even be focusing your attention on but for me, um, when I talk about search specifically for this, I went to go look for content inspiration, audio that was really like popping, right? And I didn't take long. Like I, I created a list of things that I needed to do, right? As far as it pertains to content. And then I just went and spent three to five minutes Googling and three to five minutes on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest getting inspiration y'all keep it short and keep it cute because the more time that you spend getting inspired if you're not putting it into action it's a waste of time but I do like to I do like to start that way because you'll find that like when it's time to actually make the task happen you've already done some groundwork so for example when it's time for me to make more content I already now have five audios that are trending that I saved so when I make the content I'll already be on the tail of some trending audio audio from there, you already have your power, your power goal statement, right? Which is to get more consistent flow in my business. That's mine. I don't know what yours is, but make sure that number one, you make that goal have some value and some weight in it. So I like to say that your goals need to be clear. They need to have numbers 
okay? And they need to have feeling, okay? So for example, my goal statement, my power statement for my goal is going to be get um, get consistent flow in my business that results in because uh, I got my freedom number $3,500 a month and um makes my life have more ease. Started this business to be like to have more ease, not to make the same money that I was making as a teacher, which is what I do. I wanted to make more money and I wanted to have ease, right? And so I am, my 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 nourish goal, the thing I'm gonna say to myself every day is I am getting consistent flow in my business that will result in $3,500 a month and make my life have more ease. You can say like, you know, I am going to lose 15 pounds so that I can feel more confident in the clothes that I wear. Get real clear on what you want and why you want it. And that will help you in your nourish. Now, when we talk about nourishing, we talk about um, formation and we talk about how we're going to make something happen. But when you are thinking about these big things, every day you're going to say your goal st uh, statement. Let me move some of this around. Every day you're going to say your goal statement, but then you need to be clear with yourself on a simple task that you're going to do, okay? When we created your, your matrix, your prioritization matrix, you should have gotten every single task that you need in there. And the reason why you need to do that, friends, is because when it is time for you to actually go and do your nourish section, when it's time for you to look at your big goal statement, which here is mine, you need to have three tasks that you're going to complete. And don't make them hard. So for example, filming this video was one of my tasks, right? Um, uploading this video is a whole other task, and, I, and I'm going to accomplish it. And the last one is creating... Um, back posts right uh creating um dry content i don't i don't even know in my head i know what i mean but wringing the content dry right wringing video dry so that and this boils down to be honest to too many things for it to be on here it's it's, it's a blog it's open clips so that i can actually get get it broken down um and facebook group posts Right. So to be honest, I probably will focus on on one day on the blog and then focus another day on the open clips and then focus another day on the Facebook groups. You got to keep your goals um, limited to three tasks a day, because more than likely you have more than one goal. You're you're more than likely functioning in a mode that has you moving a lot of things, especially if you're in transition. And so if you put too much on your plate, you'll find that nothing gets done and then you're defeated and you don't trust yourself. Whereas if you put only three things on your plate and then you're done in five minutes, then yay, you can do another thing. But I like to keep it simple and keep it cute because to be honest, filming this video took three hours. Because I had to make sure that my slides were together. I had to make sure that I was in a quiet place. I got two kids. I had to make sure they were going to leave me alone. <laughs> um, and uploading this video, it should be easy. But to be honest, it's going to take Zoom probably about 30 minutes to make sure I get my download. Because um, I'm not going to be sitting here watching it. Then it's going to take me another maybe 20 minutes to actually upload it into YouTube and onto the places that I'm going to put it, right? So you have to be realistic with yourself about what you're trying to accomplish every day. But every single day, you're going to come into your snap board. You're going to, you know, if you need to get inspiration for the day, if you need to go figure out what you need, you need to go research for the day, yay. If not, you should already have some stuff in here, right? Some links to some videos, some links to some scriptures, some actual words to affirm you. And then from there, you're going to actually read out your goal statement which mine is get consistent flow in my business that results in $3,500 a month and makes my life have more ease. I'm going to do that in three simple steps, right? So in your nourish, you break it down into three at the max, as, as few steps as a, you can. And all of these things should come from your prioritization map. Okay, affirm. When we affirm, we obstacle plan. There is a study that says people who plan goals without thinking about obstacles are like 80 percent less likely to actually accomplish those goals 
than people who actually think about the, the, the things that could go wrong. Thinking about what could go wrong for so many of us seems like pessimistic and it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so many of us have been taught and have been wired to do business the wrong way that it, it, we, we don't even understand when we're functioning in business in a, from a place that is foolish. But you do not, the Bible says no one would build a house without knowing the cost of it. You cannot ask God to give you an abundance of anything and you have not weighed the cost and you do not know what it will take and you do not know what could go wrong. That just isn't intelligible. And from a business standpoint, you cannot make plans in your business without thinking about the things that could hinder your plans. Or what you're really doing is saying that you're not actually trying to function a business. You're just trying to operate from your wishes and your hopes. And we don't do that around here. Around here, we make decisions and our decisions are vast and our decisions have great impact. And so when we talk about obstacle planning, I got um, all of my like love for obstacle planning from a woman named Danielle Ottegren. She is a German, I believe a German um, sociologist who created this amazing a virtual app that you can go to. It's whoopmylife.org. And you can literally put your goals in there. It's a fabulous system. My only problem with Danielle's system is that it does not talk about decisions. It talks about wishes. And I believe that as entrepreneurs, everything that we want is a wish. We create nothing. We create something out of nothing, excuse me. So if you go into it without actually being firm on your decision, your likelihood of making anything happen drastically decreases. Um, I talk about this inside of my book, which is called Snap Out of It as well. Um, we have got to have belief that heaven is backing us up. So when I say that I'm going to do something and I make the decision, I do that with the fullness of saying, hey, God's got my back because my 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 desires are in line with him. I live my life in accordance to his word. And so if I live my life in accordance to his word, I can stand in the confidence that he gave me that the reward will be mine. So we start with a decision. Your decision statement needs to be based on your goal. I decide that I can do whatever is necessary to make my business have consistent flow. I decide that feast and famine is not my portion, but that consistent, fruitful action in my business will flow every single day. I decide that I am the person who can make my business have stability and not the type of leader who cannot figure that type of business flow out, right? So make sure that it's affirming to who you are. Try to avoid like negatives, speak positive into yourself, right? I decide that I am the type of business person who can create consistent income early on in my business. I've only been doing what I do now for less than a year. I've been doing my coaching program for a year. I've only been running Kingdom Women Don't Play Small, quite literally. <laughs> that course hasn't even launched yet, right? Boss Believer Society, all of these things that are connected to what I'm doing today, these things haven't even been birthed. And so I'm saying to myself that I can create this kind of consistency early on in my business because most entrepreneurs don't see consistent income for 36 months. Y'all are out here trying to give up on your business and your business haven't even been alive long enough for you to be expecting to have consistent money. And a lot of us just don't know the truth about operating our business. So we're functioning out of a place where we're deciding, but we don't really know. So I want you to, to decide today that you'll take the time to do what you need to do to consistently grow your business, but also to stay in your business and not to give up. From there, you're going to have to put an outcome. Um, okay, let me put my decision statement here. I decide... I'm the woman for the job. I just, I'm just keeping it simple <laughs> because I feel like I have uh, too many blue boxes. Too many blue boxes. Um, and I'm going to delete some of these, right? So when I make the decision to say that I'm the woman for the job, what's the outcome? What is the outcome of me getting consistent flow in my business, right? Well, what happens is that I will have, like I said, more ease, right? My life will reflect um, the knowledge I know 
So many of us know things, right? But we don't know how to apply them. For me, I want to apply the principles that I know to this new business. Even though it's a new business, I still want to apply these principles. And for me, the when we talk about obstacles, we don't just talk about the things that are out of us, right? So for example, my kids busted in, in the room while I'm recording a video. Um, but we have to deal with the things inside of us. I am in a transition state right now as well. And there's so many things in my life that are trying to pull my attention that the biggest obstacle for me right now is maintaining my authority when the enemy and life is trying to make me distracted, right? For most of us, most of you all who are watching this, you need to affirm yourself and say that over yourself, that, that you don't have to give your attention to everything the enemy is trying to distract you with. And then from there, you're going to make an if-then plan. I love if-then plan. If-then is absolutely coding language. I am a techie nerd. <laughs> um, and I, I end up talking all about this inside of my book. But like cybersecurity, I, I don't do anything in the tech world, but I do so much in the tech world with my coaching business. <laughs> Because so much of how, um, you know, we've learned to master coding and how to make businesses more secure on the internet, a lot of it is really just us taking like actual human principles and applying it to internet and to, to the web and to technology. But I digress. You're going to make an if-then plan, right? So if the enemy tries to distract me, then... I will go to my power statement, right? Which my power statement is, I am on the fastest, okay? Safest and easiest path to my expected end. Okay, I don't know if that resonates with y'all, but I, that power statement always snatches me back up when stuff tries to make me go left, because sometimes I go left. <laughs> then I say, oh, 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 uh -uh, I'm on the fastest, safest, easiest path to my expected end. That means I have to be able to overcome this. I have to be able to stay focused. I, this can't be the distraction that's going to take me out. Nah, because mm -mm, I'm on the fastest, easiest, safest path. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That always gets me back focused, okay? All right, let's move on. Now that you know what it is to search, to nourish, and to affirm, and you should have done these things, let's move on to the next section. And I'm gonna actually clear all of these out. I know it's so hard to say goodbye, but I'm gonna clear all of this stuff out so that I can go to the next section of this training. When we polish, we polish in prayer. And one thing about me, baby, I am a prayer warrior. I'm an intercessor. I started my ministry um, through prayer. I launched a 100-day prayer call, which I do every year from September 23rd to the 1st of January in 2014. And I don't play about prayer because I understand the power of prayer. And a lot of entrepreneurs, we don't know how to um, get business-minded in prayer. We are so emotional in prayer that when we spend time in God's presence, we are, we're crying, we're whining, we're moaning, and we were not, we're not actually using prayer as a way to connect with God as a business partner. But I believe that your prayer life should be just as powerful for your business as it is for you, for your family, for your children, for your health. You need to be praying and you need to have a prayer strategy for your business. And I use the Lord's Prayer, the structure of the Lord's Prayer, to really give me clarity on how to pray. And Jesus gave us this structure on purpose. And so when he started the Lord's Prayer, he said, our Father, which art in heaven, right? He set God in his rightful place. God has so many names in the word of God. There are so many stories that give us understanding of how we can see God in our own situation. So we establish God in prayer in the way that we need him for our situation. Right now, I need him to be my shield and my buckler, okay? I don't know about y'all, but baby, I need my shield and I need my buckler, okay? I need, I need God to be the standard that keeps back my enemy and the thing that whacks my enemy if he gets too close, okay? All right, that's just, 
That's just Marquila. That's where I'm at today. And a lot of us, we we have not harnessed prayer. We have not harnessed prayer. And so we're frustrated. We're trying to figure out, okay, God, why can't I see the goodness of God in our life? And it's because we need to harness prayer. And so when you're doing your polish inside of your actual document, you want to make sure that you take your sheet, take your um, whatever you establish God as, and you put that here on your paper. Here's why. You want to consistently see what it is that you have aligned yourself to believe about God, because that will that will show you what you're aligning yourself to believe about yourself. I am I am affirming that I'm on the safest, the fastest, and the easiest path because I got my shield and my buckler with me. Okay, let's move on because I promise y'all I didn't come to preach. <laughs> Um, now that I have established him, we submit in, in, um, in the Lord's prayer, Jesus says, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your will be done. And so that means that he submitted to God. He said, God is your plan. It's, it's your will. Right. Um, and so you are my mighty fortress, right? He is my mighty fortress. Okay. I'm not going to break down this entire prayer, but I, I, I want to break down the pieces. I'm not going to create a whole prayer because I found myself getting churchy, getting right churchy, um, and I need to stay focused. So from there, you're going to request for the, for the now. Jesus asked for daily bread. Um, listen, God cares about your now and he cares about your spiritual. He cares about the eternal. It, all of it matters to him. And so in the Lord's prayer, Jesus prayed for the now and he prayed for the eternal. He said, give us this day. And then he said, and on top of it, lead us not into temptation. Okay. Help us not to be tempted. And the word of God says that you should end every prayer in Jesus name. And so we go back to establish God for who he is at the top. And then we, um, we, we end the prayer there. When you repent, I believe this. I believe that God had Jesus repent before he requested for the eternal. Because when you start to make spiritual declarations and spiritual requests, then you engage in spiritual warfare. And you have to go into spiritual warfare with your heart pure. That is just the truth. It doesn't matter what you were doing the minute, the second, the hour before. Once you repent, the Bible says your sins are taken as far from you as the east is from the west. And baby, I'm not talking about the east side from the west side. Think the east side of the universe, okay? All the way to the west side of the universe. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> and so we repent, we request for the eternal, and then we reestablish God. Marquila, you want me to do all of this? Yes. A lot of you all are not seeing growth happen in your businesses because you have not leveraged prayer strategy in your business. I can't say that enough. There's just no other way for me to say that. A lot of us are not covered in prayer. And because of that, we're not covered in our actions. Hello, somebody. All right. <laughs> So after you pray, you're going to go and do some work. Get to it, y'all. When you get done doing your work, I want you to come back and I want you to evaluate your day. Were you effective? Effective says, did I do what I planned to do and were, were the, was the outcome what I expected? Inside of the Snap Journal, we actually talk about your favorite part of the day and how you failed, but we, we have a lot to get into with that. And so I wanted to keep it very simple. To, were you effective? If the answer is yes, why? If the answer is no, why not? This is not the space where you beat yourself up. This is the space where you extend compassion and you celebrate yourself for anything you did, even if it was nothing, even if it was that you got distracted. You celebrate yourself because you took the time to evaluate and now you can be better. Y'all, I wanted to get this done in about 45 minutes. Every single time I sit down <laughs> to talk through the SNAP method, it is so difficult for me to be succinct. But I think I, I, I think I did it. I think I ran through. If you are going to use this amazing system to help you plan your quarter, please do tag me at I am Markeela. You can visit thefaithedit.com. Tag the faith edit at the faith edit. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Y'all do. Do, do, do let me know if this was helpful and if this worked for you. And if it did, stay tapped in. Get on our email list. 
stay connected. I am going to be putting out plan with me, videos about planning and videos about execution. I'm going to be talking about actually doing the work and I'm going to actually do the work with you all. As boss believers, there's so much that we could be doing, but we have to focus our attention. I am so grateful that you let me sell an hour of your life. I hope that this amazing plan is something that you will implement. And I do hope that you snap out of it, girl. Whatever your it is, whatever you need to release yourself from, whatever you got to let go, let go of it. There's so much more for you on the other side of small.